Hello everybody. Um, my, name's, uh, my name is Oliver Tillman. That's my brother. Um, took a bit of time to get him on stage, but we uh, finally made that uh, happen for all of you here. I think it's, it's the right setting. Um, we're probably both confusing our parents a little bit with our father having been in the same company all his life finishing his work here. I founded four companies by now, Fabian founded several, um, kind of been entrepreneurs all our life, very, very different. Um, and uh, even though I had a few exits, uh, I'm probably the by far more boring guy here. Um, we can, we can, we can maybe, maybe, maybe start by asking, um, um, no we don't. Uh, yes, we do. Um, who here knows Pornhub? No idea. Never heard of it. No, never heard of it. Okay. Um, that's the guy that brought you Pornhub and a few other of those for many, many years. Um, so, I, I'd like to start at the beginning, though, to give you a really a deeper view into, into who Fabian is and, and, and where, where, where he came from. Um, so let's really start at the beginning, because he said repeatedly that he's really a developer from, at heart. So when did you start writing code, and what did you first write? Uh, yes. So hi everyone. First of all, um, I, uh, as he said, started as a developer in general. Uh, so when I was about 50 years old, I uh, was programming in, in, in basic and, and similar stuff in school. And the first uh, fun project, so to speak, I had with a friend of mine was that um, in, in school we desperately wanted to get access to the uh, teacher's PC. So we wrote a little Trojan horse that uh, we put into the system and made it so that uh, it would only launch if we knew that the bad teacher of the two that wouldn't understand the thing uh, would actually be at the desk. So whatever the good uh, tech teacher was there, we made sure the thing wouldn't launch. And it would simply say that the CMOS had an issue and he needs to enter his password so that uh, we can check what the heck is this happening. And he actually did. The very first time uh, he answered the password, didn't thought anything by it. And the next day we checked and we had access to the system. So it was fun. Uh, well, that's more or less the first uh, fun programming uh, job I, I did. That's how I kind of started, I guess. At what speeds did you start on the internet? What what was the first? I actually remember what the first modem was. Ah yes, but yes. Uh, I started uh, with CompuServe. I don't know if you guys know that. It's like AOL uh, long ago. Uh, um, with a 56k baud modem. Uh, and I drove our parents mad, I don't know if you remember that, yes. because our phone bill, more or less, uh, I don't know, went time, times 50 or so, from one month to the next, and they were wondering what the heck I'm doing. Uh, and it was really only that, that's it. But uh, yes, that's how I guess I started there. Okay. So, so we established um, you're really a developer at heart. Um, when did you start feeling as a manager? Uh, so, I developed until basically about 2007-2008 um, when I started uh, buying my first company that I actually programmed uh, a lot of the changes that I did also. Um, and uh, at that point, um, actually finding new acquisition targets and, and then buying uh, companies was much more fun than programming itself. Uh, so I kind of lost track of the programming part. Uh, although also, honestly, uh, I just didn't have time anymore. So we looked at so many uh, possible um, targets to buy that uh, programming on the side made no sense. Uh, so I, I had 50 or so programmers on the side that would work on it, so I didn't have time. I still remember the time actually when you we were kind of <coughs> gone over Christmas in Canada for months, months on end. It's the time you, you, you made the kind of first really big acquisition uh, with the company that, that, that was later the core of Menwin, um, kind of. Um, there was, I think, among others, brothers and Upon, not Pornhub yet? Uh, Pornhub, not Pornhub. Pornhub. Yes. Not Upon, okay. Not Upon. Complicated. <laughs> yes, too many porn sites. Too uh, many. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, 
And if I remember correctly, like all the consultants and lawyers thought you were crazy doing that. Day. Uh, pretty much, yes. So I, I, I came to uh, Montreal in December, uh, three days before Christmas, uh, and I uh, decided or said I would stay there for maybe two, three weeks just to see if the deal would be possible to, to buy that company. Um, and I stayed until March in the end because I just wanted to get it done. And yeah, the lawyers uh, thought I'm crazy for two reasons. Uh, one, I never wore a jacket, uh, even when we walked outside at minus 20 degrees, and they were very confused about that. Uh, but more importantly, uh, they were very confused that I would sign a contract where I, I spend uh, roughly 40 million up front um, and then another seven each month to buy a company. And even if the very last payment, after already 130 or so million was paid, uh, couldn't be done, then the old owners would have gotten the company back and I would have kept nothing. Uh, which obviously in, in normal M&A deals does not happen this way. But since uh, the market I was in didn't really understand normal M&A deals, they would not accept some strange uh, system that would be normal there. So they said, I will only do this if I get the company back, if you don't pay me and I don't need to pay you back the money. Uh, my lawyer said, that's insane, no one does that. And I said, hey, We'll, we'll, we'll do it. I have no no fear that I can't pay. Uh, so if it does happen, then tough luck. And if not, it's good. So it's a good deal. So let's do it. So that kind of worked out. And we're already we're already talking large numbers here. But um, already publicly known, you you later then decided that kind of doing that out of an obviously gigantic cash flow um, isn't really worth your while needs to be bigger um, and you uh, raised money like some of we do but you raised it as a standard credit line north of 200 million yes. from a PE shop in pawn to buy pawn like yes uh, so I, I, I did do that, although I wouldn't necessarily call it a standard uh, a debt, uh, considering the fact that the rate was more or less a ripoff um, <laughs> that probably no one else again would do, uh, but it just made sense in the business we were in. Um, but yeah, so basically at the end um, of uh, about a year or so after I bought the country, uh, the, the company in, in, in Montreal, uh, I, I didn't want to really be in charge of actually having to pay uh, all the monthly stuff from, from cash flow um, that I still needed to pay for the earnout that they got. Uh, but instead I wanted to get it all rid of so that they were out of the picture because they got quite annoying in like, requesting more information to be sure that they get paid and if the payment was, uh, or if they feared there would be an issue, they started causing issues and so on. So I didn't want that. So I, I, I started relatively early looking for cash. Uh, and uh, to just get them out. But then when I started, um, I, I talked to uh, Grant Thornton, which is, a, a, is a, not a top, top uh, five, but a top seven or so um, uh, consulting firm worldwide, and talked to them um, and showed them our numbers. And they said, this is a no-brainer. If you have these numbers, any normal firm will get funding, uh, debt financing on this in, in two weeks, easy. So they said, it'll take us three months because it's porn and it's evil and so on, but we'll try, it's fine. So they started to try, and we actually had the discussion uh, with someone that wanted to do the whole thing, um, which was a lot smaller than the whole thing, than it was in the end, uh, after about a month. Uh, it was a firm in, in uh, Chicago. And uh, we talked to them, we met them, they loved the whole thing, they loved the financials, well, everything was great, but it's porn. So, a day before we got the term sheet, the head of the board decided that he doesn't want to have this on his resume, so he dropped out. So he said, no, we'll do something else, which was a much worse deal than they, than they could have done with us, but it was safer and not so negative. I have a short interruption because I have an interesting anecdote. I recently met a somebody that worked at a big consultancy, top five consultancy, that were also reviewing the deal. And I can say that because I am under no whatever. Um, and 
they didn't do it because it's porn, they then invested in a gambling company in Africa. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. It's like the other guys that, 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 not the ones in Chicago, but I'm saying in general, you, you hear a lot about uh, uh, banks that do deals with arms dealers or whatever, but porn is very bad. So it's very confusing to me, but that's how it is eh, in today's world. Um, but yeah, so uh, the, the idea of them doing it in three months kind of turned into 12. Uh, but in the end, they did succeed, and we got a much, much bigger uh, raise uh, of debt than we planned. Uh, so we expanded a lot our deck in terms of what we want to do, and had a big buffer in the end to do extra deals. Uh, but yeah, in the beginning, um, the reason in the end why it was so interesting to do this was that I had about three, four deals lined up that made sense to me. Uh, that included uh, half of Playboy, for example. Uh, and U-Porn, uh, which were both very expensive but very lucrative. Uh, and therefore, it just made sense that even at this extremely bad rate, debt-wise, to do this. So, it was good. I also remember that you said once that, that like, the other porn companies were kind of confused what Manwin is, and that, like, you were different. How were you different? Uh, well, I, I guess um, one of the reasons why it was so, not easy, but so interesting to do these acquisitions was that timing-wise, uh, all these companies, the old ones, were online relatively old. So there were six, seven, eight years in the business. It was all people that started with a very non-business mind. Uh, people that, because it was very, very easy to start in the beginning, in like 98 and so on, to, to start these sites was easy. Uh, quick cash flow and, and, and quick returns very, very fast. But they all grew to a certain size, which they got scared of themselves. And uh, since we approached the whole concept from a much, much more business side, it was very different for us uh, to handle this stuff. So uh, taking on their business was good and easy in the end. Um, and uh, they had the headache of, uh, they didn't have to worry about uh, the business stuff they didn't understand anymore. Um, and, and could, could go and, and do their own stuff again that was easier with less people that were involved and they liked that much more. So that was really the biggest difference uh, and, and that did confuse them uh, because they didn't understand how big we could grow so quickly uh, because they thought, especially the tube sites, would be too expensive to handle. Okay, so um, to close on the porn side, maybe do you have a few interesting stats having 60 million nicks a day data probably drops out. Uh, yes, I mean, um, the, 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 for me, two most, in, well, some of the two most interesting things um, all have to do with the fact that obviously no one on this planet watches porn. We all know that, right? No one, uh, except for the 60 million every day and the 250 million every month different users on these sites that we had. But um, even in, in uh, Eastern uh, cu countries, um, we had a few very interesting stats. For example, um, during, uh, during Ramadan, uh, we had a big drop of, of traffic from uh, South Arabia and uh, all this stuff. Iraq, Iran, I don't know, everything. Um, but the most interesting thing is the day it ended. <laughs> oh my god, really. It's, uh, it was funny to see. You literally see a graph that goes like this, and then it goes whoop. Lovely. Really awesome. And the other thing that was really, really funny too, which uh, in, in Germany I'm sure is a, is a big, nice, fun subject for some of you, um, was uh, soccer games or, or football, uh, football, whatever you want to call it. Um, so especially, of course, country games, right? So you have, I don't know, uh, Spain playing against Germany and you see the game starting and traffic from Germany and Spain will drop, of course, right? So drop on traffic and then whoever wins, <laughs> interestingly enough, is a bigger spike than the ones that lose. I, I would have thought the ones that lose, you know, <laughs> that, that was always very interesting. Uh, but it worked every single time. So it's some kind of a reward, I guess, for winning. Yes. Thank you. Um, so, okay, something like two years ago, I don't only remember, you exited Manuel towards management. Um, 
You're no longer the king of Thorn. Very no. sorry for that. Sad, yes, sad. Um, there People was a slideshow. The there was a slideshow one with Hugh Hefner and stuff, and then an old crappy year old picture of Fabian. That was interesting. Yes. Um, so, what have you been up to in the last years? Uh, so yeah, I, I sold in 2013, uh, and since then I decided to look for investments. Basically, that's the main thing. Uh, first, I decided to relax a bit because it was a lot of uh, stress, uh, lots of people to manage and so on. So uh, it was quite nice to get out. At How big was Manuel at the end? Can you say? A uh, thousand two hundred employees, with uh, uh, seven seven offices worldwide. So yes, big. Uh, but it was fun. But it How many consultants and lawyers? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't want to say that, it's annoying. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, I, I think uh, we had, in the end, probably about 25 lawyers that we constantly paid for stuff because of different countries and jurisdictions, especially M&A deals, which were just annoying because at some point we needed to ask in seven different jurisdictions whenever we bought something because of the structure and uh, where it came from, where it had to go to, and oh, complicated. So it was fun. Okay. Yeah, but uh, um, so yes, investments is what I do now. Uh, much more relaxed. Um, just look at literally everything that crosses my desk. Uh, I have two very good uh, guys that have been working for me for a long time already in Manuel that work with me. Um, and yeah, it's fun. That's it. So talk about the investments. Um, because what I find interesting, um, and, and, and if people ask me, like, why does Fabian do that, I always say, never bet against my brother. So, um, you might not understand the focus, uh, but that might become apparent in a bit. Like, okay, what was one of the first things you did? Uh, what was one of the first things? The first thing I did was a, was a mistake. Uh, so let's not talk about that one. Um, okay, the <laughs> no, the, uh, I, I do both uh, real investments, as in into people or companies that I have uh, just a bit of uh, involvement in, in terms of uh, consultancy or feedback or just chatting with them so they have someone to talk to. Um, but I also do a few things that I, I want to do uh, directly or more or less directly. So the, one of the first things I did was um, Okolo, uh, which is still in very early alpha, uh, which is a drone project. Um, and it was just because I like flying drones, which you can see by my scars, because it's not nice to fly them and they attack you. Uh, but it's still fun to fly them, and uh, so I have a drone project that I run with someone in uh, Croatia. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, it really went all over the place, uh, from fashion to uh, real estate um, uh, to high-tech high IT uh, and uh, drones and, um, for example, uh, an energy drink. Yes. So yes, there's no real focus, which confuses him all the time. Completely, I love it. It's like one of the reasons I already do it is to confuse him, to be honest. But uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, it's a fun thing. Uh, I, I I think I, I mainly uh, invest in people. I, I invest in people that just stick out to me somehow that I like in terms of their energy that they put into the product uh, and 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 what they have uh, to give to the idea um, more than the sector is specifically in. I think that's that's much more important to, to me at least. So what's the energy drink called, can you say? Uh, it's called Magu, which probably no one has ever heard of. But it's also very early, so it's, it's okay. But it's a very nice one. It's not one of those chewing gum drinks. It actually tastes good. <laughs> yes, really. No, it really does taste good. It's okay. quite nice. And um, so next to doing stuff in high runway fashion, yes. um, drones, real estate, us, he, he invested in my company, thank God. Yes. Um, next to a few other things, so it's not that I only take money from my mother, I take money from other people too. Um, you also, you also, you also, you also start in a co-working space. Yes. I, why? Yes, uh, I'm starting a co-working space because my office in Brussels. Uh, do, do you really want to lose money? Uh, yes, yes, I love losing money. Love it. Uh, no, I, li I like helping people. That's the difference. 
Um, no, I, I, I'm starting a co-working space because I needed space for some of my investments I did. Uh, and secondly, because my main office in Brussels is not really used that much by me because I never go. And, and now I have an excuse to go and because there's co-working people there also. Uh, and secondly, it's because now the co-working people can use my really, really, really nice office now and then for conferences and meeting people. And so so it, at least it gets put to use. So that's good. That's and it's maybe again it's a very strange reason to open a co-working space, but uh, that's basically. It. No, 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 no. No, it's a, there you go. Good. It's good reason. Good. See, I love it. Yes. So it will be a very, very nice co-working space. Yes. In Brussels, I can tell you. Yes, we just um, uh, we just checked furniture today. So. so Actually, I have a, I have a guy here in Cologne that still owes me lots of furniture because I made the connection to him, <laughs> and all of Manuel and the co-working space now have that furniture. I know a guy that knows a guy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So okay, but, but another weird one. There was um, there was a company. I can't talk about the company. Yeah, yes, yes. Okay. Um, uh, recently, there was a company going bankrupt, and um, there was a rumor that somebody took over that company. From the bankruptcy. Anybody have a tip? Sorry, did I hear you say it recently there was a country that was going bankrupt? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been an awesome idea. And a country to cover a country? <laughs> what the fuck is with that? <laughs> I said it's the ex Something king about co working space as well? Ex king of porn, we just wanted to lose the off porn. Um, no. A company. Okay, never mind. Uh, we're talking about front back. Which again, probably no one has heard of yet. So, yeah, awesome, ah, there you go. Very good. <laughs> See? Good. <laughs> hey, I'm not hating on them. It's mine. So no. No, it's. Uh, I am doing it actually. That's the point. Yes. So uh, um, about uh, now a month ago or, or six weeks ago. Uh, I heard that they wanted to close, uh, and I said, "Why close? It seems a shame." Um, so I talked to them to see if I can buy it before they close it. And uh, although they already announced that they will close it, they then had to announce that they won't close it, which caused again press, which was awesome. So we were on uh, on what's it called on TechCrunch like three times. It was awesome. Uh, but no, I, I mean it's um, it's a fun project. Uh, I have no idea if my ideas will work. Uh, but it's the point, right? So I want to play a bit, and I haven't programmed for ages. I, I, I tried about two months ago because I just wanted to do something, but I didn't have enough purpose. Uh, yeah, so yeah. now I have enough purpose, so I'm programming for uh, for for uh, um, some apps now. So we'll see how good that goes. And I feel that because we build like we giant swarm build a microservice infrastructure, and I suddenly get calls. Okay, I'm trying to get this self-replicating, high availability, whatever cluster running, what do I do? Like, okay, thank you, Fabian. Um, um, but, okay, but why do you think you can get that one in? I, I know I think you can get that one in, but why do you, you think? You probably think that what I mean, to be honest. But uh, no, I, I think, uh, I mean, I, I, I think I'm quite good at seeing mistakes that people do in terms of uh, uh, products or, or strategies. Um, and uh, I, 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 at least it was the case in the past that when I took something and had ideas of how I would change it, it worked quite well. Um, so I hope this is not only the case for porn. So uh, we'll see. Maybe I'm just very, very, very good at porn, but I don't think so. Okay. So you invest in, you have investments in France and in Belgium and in Germany and in Croatia and in uh, yes. different stuff. What do you look for? What do I look for? Yeah, mainly people, to be honest. Uh, and sadly, often these people uh, uh, in some areas, at least like in Eastern Europe, um, get ripped off uh, because the countries they are in give very, very little support. Um, but they have great ideas and uh, they just need someone that, that can help them. Uh, and it's a great uh, market to go into, in my opinion. Uh, and there's a lot of very, very tech-savvy people there. Um, uh, one of them I could not invest, for example, because he just gave too much of his company away for too little money and it made no sense. Although he could have, uh, in my opinion at least, if he would have done it right, with the right amount of investments that he could have gotten, uh, he can go against Tesla, not a problem. 
Uh, very, very good electric car tech, uh, amazing cars, very, very nice, and I'm a car fan, so that's a big thing when I say that. Um, uh, sorry? Uh, Who are you? Excuse me? Yes. You just missed the keynote, I think. Ah, yeah, I did! Hey! <laughs> awesome. How are you doing? Yeah, you should have been here uh, 20 minutes ago. Ah, <laughs> we'll talk in a bit. Let's let's put something in your calendar. Yes. <laughs> All right. I, I, no, no evil thing. I'm actually, as I, as I said, I love what you do. No question. There you go. It's fair. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So so that's really it, huh? I mean. So there's Osborne and Clark here. They can probably help in rebalancing an entire uh, cap table and uh, cleaning it up again. Just saying, you might have a job, guys. Um, so I'm opening up for questions now, if there are questions. Here we go. Questions. We've got about ten minutes. Okay, can I ask the crowd in the back? Crowd in the back? Crowd in the back? Oh, it's beyond. Okay, all right. Well, <laughs> that's the other ship. Uh, thank you for relaunching front back. No problem. First of all. Second of all, I hope you can um, cut short a long dispute I had with a friend. You're obviously from the porn industry. Yes. Uh, my friend has no experience in the porn industry. He has no experience with startups. But he really, really, really wants to launch a Netflix for porn. Okay. Do you really think that, A, there is room for that? Because B, at the USA already launched something like that. And B, somebody who has no experience in the industry can launch something like that. And maybe C, would you invest in a company like that? Uh, I think it's... No, no, no. There you go. Why? <laughs> that was easy. Okay, sorry. Yes, why? Fine. Um, no, uh, so... Uh, yes, there already is the Netflix of porn. Uh, and there's like 15 of them. And none of them work well. Uh, the only one that really works well is owned by MindGeek, who is what, Ma what Manwin was before. Uh, and the only reason it works well is because they already have 60 million visitors a day, right? So it's easy to make it work well. Uh, all the others, like you said, Beate Uzer, no chance, didn't work. Um, because it's, it's really, really difficult to, uh, to get into, um, into the business. You need a lot of cash to get, uh, to get traction, to get any kind of traffic because basically two or three companies have it completely locked down. So it's very hard to get in. So uh, I would also never invest in it, not only because I really, really do not want to invest in porn anymore. Um, uh, not that I don't like it, it's just that it just is no longer my focus, so I don't want to do that, uh, even if I have no focus. How can you focus? But uh, yes, so I, I don't think it makes any sense, to be honest, to do that. So, no, definitely no. I mean, the only thing that does make sense, in my opinion, and I tried and tried and tried, and I wouldn't accept it, is to take Netflix and add porn. That's a totally different thing. That might work quite well, but hey, that's just me. I, I often get those pitch decks, by the way. Yes. So, yes. Hey, do you know this guy that's saying you don't live with your brother? I have an idea for porn. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I might or might not follow up that if I feel like it. Yes. Any more questions? Questions, questions? This is your chance. Yes. Hi, Fabian. Uh, with uh, 60 million uniques a day, I can imagine you had ideas to boost different businesses through your point size. Uh, are there like categories of businesses that work pretty well and others that didn't that you have experience with? Uh, yes, we actually tried a few things. Um, first of all, it was very, very hard to even convince any business to let me us boost it through porn sites because lots of them obviously don't want to. Uh, even condom companies usually don't, although I might have found one, so that's interesting. We'll see. Um, uh, another completely different focus, obviously, condoms, but anyway. Uh, um, Not porn, though. Yes, it's just close, but anyway. Uh, no, the, so we, so since we found no one that wanted to do it with us, what we decided is let's just try it ourselves. So we decided let's try to sell TVs, TVs, normal TVs on porn, and it absolutely didn't work, not at all, which was actually shocking to me. I thought the my my, 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 my porn on TV anymore. <laughs> 
No, no. Uh, so yes, we literally uh, just put up ads for TVs, uh, really, really cheap, without having any stock, just to see what happens. And we would have just bought them and sent them out. Uh, and I think we sold five, <laughs> which was yes, very, very nice, but uh, doesn't really compare to all the other stuff we did. So therefore, um, it didn't make any sense, sadly. Although I would have loved to do it because I think with enough testing, we could have done it. But the problem on porn is that um, uh, the people on it are relatively focused on one thing. <laughs> and it's not TV. Yes, it might be on TV. He does have average times for how yes. long that focus takes per country. <laughs> this is you. I am intrigued. I, I am intrigued at the metrics you have. Yes, it is awesome. Trust me, it is. I have awesome stuff. But hey, some stuff needs to take stay a secret. It's more fun this way. The anthropologist Stays in, the an in, in imagination. It's better for everyone, I think. The anthropologist would have a field day with your data. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> Hi, here. Yes. Um, I have basically two questions. And the first is, I have seen a TED talk about the bad influence of porn on the human brain. Did you see that? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> then uh, let's go to the second question. Do you watch porn yourself? Uh, not anymore. I did in the past. Safety. Very, very, very little porn watching now. No, no, I, I do other things. I don't do porn. <laughs> well, it's normal, I guess. But anyway, yes. Please. All right, let's get the microphone to the back over there. And all right, is our panel getting ready? Uh, the, the, the tech thing is interesting, though. I might want to look at it. So we'll see. But yeah. I have a very different opinion, I think, on, on, on that. We'll, we'll see. Who knows? Um, I have two questions. The one thing is, um, does tourism commercial work on porn sites? For Tour like to tourism for, for, uh, for actually, I'm building a flight search engine. Okay. It's called Flight Triple X. Awesome. Every every, well, every, why, why every airport has three letters, and it's like a gambling machine for oh. booking a flight, but it's always the cheapest flight. And I'm thinking about actually running uh, ads on porn sites because you will get there are pretty many guys who fly around. So you will get a lot of traffic from people looking for porn anyway. You know? <laughs> yes, it, it, it's awesome because you will probably look, get lots of lots of traffic from people that look for flight porn, which I'm not sure what that would look like. But um, the, no, I, I'm, I'm sure you know anything. In the end, if you do it right, you can sell it on porn sites, I'm sure. You just need to have the right ad in place, and that's the key thing. Yeah? Uh, so, I'm sure if, you are, um, if you're good enough, uh, you can come up with an ad that works and gets you clicks. But the bigger problem you will have is keeping the focus of the user after they click and they realize that, wait, this is not porn, shit, where am I? <laughs> so, that, that's really the... It just, sadly, doesn't, it just doesn't, doesn't click their mouse, I guess. Yes, no. that's it. Yeah, yeah, of course, sure. So before, before this um, descends into a brainstorming session on pornography, uh, let me give one more question here, why not? Yeah, why not? I mean, there's a reason, but, you know. What is your... Most, um, yeah, the, the, your con contribution as, a, as an angel investor, I mean, why should someone ask you to invest in this company when he has also other investors to choose from? Uh, I, I think you need to take the one that you're most comfortable with. I don't know, uh, the people that come to me um, usually find it impressive what I did in three years. Uh, which I always tell them I don't find that impressive because it was porn, but um, I'm just honest. Uh, no, but I, I like um, I like investing, as I said, in people that have a big uh, commitment to their product, uh, like I had in the past, um, and uh, that want to change a bit how the industry right now works, even if it's not direct disruption and I don't know all the big keywords that everybody's looking for. Uh, I don't really look at that. Personally, work for those companies. Uh, yes. Um, uh, well, you could argue that uh, two things. Um, one, yes, I do like to step in and actually give very, very constructive, direct feedback yeah. uh, that I do like to do too. And uh, at least one person here, uh, which I'm not sure if he's listening, can probably attest to the fact that um, just for the uh, 
uh, fun trips I might uh, organize. It it might be that has yeah. No, let's not go there. Uh, fun trips like taking a boat somewhere, whatever. Um, uh, just for that, it's worth it to, to get me in. That's, that's me. So I know that Esther wants to wants to. Oh, you want to go on? Go on, go on. And from from my end again. Hello. Uh, hello. Okay. Hello. Oh, good. Um, and just to end it as. Just as I said at the beginning, don't bet against my brother. So for me, it just it increases the likelihood by fact of that message of succeeding. But he does help and he is involved. And as I said, um, he's, he's one of the few investors that really plays with our platform and pastors, engineers about, okay, well, the, the, the whatever cluster doesn't really work that way. You need to do it differently and understands what he's talking about. So in tech investments, especially valuable. And he has run companies that are kind of get a lot of traffic. Awesome. Thank Guys, you. thank you very, very much uh, for, for that, uh, that great talk. And uh, I think a lot, of, a lot of information on there. And let me thank you. And uh, we'll hand the stage over.